I'm Megan Schiller from KDKA TV News and this is your KDKA News Now update. I've got your top headlines and the latest weather. A jury found a man guilty of second degree murder for the shooting death of a U-Haul employee. Rajon Burton shot and killed Jacob Gillette back in 2021. Chris Hoffman was in the courtroom today as that verdict was read. Second degree murder carries a mandatory life without parole sentence. Gillette's family says justice was served. After hours of deliberations that started on Friday, the word came at three today of guilty. The words Jacob's father, Jeff, and the more than 20 family and friends wanted to hear inside that courtroom. Relief. Um, it's been a long road. And it's justice for Jake. The jury found Byrne guilty of shooting Gillette and stealing a U-Haul truck back in July of 2021. Gillette died at UPMC Presbyterian Hospital a few days later. Jurors saw video of Byrne going in and out of the U-Haul before the shooting and heard the 911 calls in the immediate aftermath during this trial. An amazing case. Uh, made it, in my opinion, an easy decision. There was discussion of whether it'd be first or second degree murder. There were questions about what the jury would come back with because they had issues coming to an agreement. I figure it was an open and shut case. And when you hear that, I mean, obviously from the defensive standpoint, they're going to be looking for that. That's that, that was the best shot they had. So, uh, sure, we were nervous, but uh, in the end, justice was served. After the verdict came down, there were tears and hugs with everyone gathered to remember Jacob. He was just 21 at the time of the shooting, but his father says he did so much in such a short time. He's an amazing, amazing man, and uh, only 21 years old, he's the greatest man I'll ever know. Burton still has to be formally sentenced. That will come within the next 90 days. Outside the Allegheny County Courthouse, Chris Hoffman, KDKA TV News. Several large event planners just got word that the Monroeville Convention Center canceled their contracts with little explanation. We talked to some of the showrunners about their frustration in an attempt to get some answers. How can something so big be going down in Monroeville while the key players know so little? That's what Alex Kinneman wants to know. We were told that the contract was canceled for quote unquote significant construction. He's one of the showrunners behind the Pittsburgh Gaming Expo, scheduled for this October at the Monroeville Convention Center. But now he's dealing with a logistical nightmare. You're bringing in bands. You're bringing in celebrities that are like guests. You're bringing in all of these like individuals who run vends and they exhibit and they sell their stuff at these shows. All of these people rely on those dates that you tell them. But any dates after June 1st are no more. KDK Investigates learned the space will transition on that date to a Hobby Lobby. Oxford Development Company said in part, we are excited to welcome Hobby Lobby as a new business to serve the needs of the local community and region. This new business in the heart of Monroeville's retail business district will create jobs that add to the revitalization of Monroeville. Vendors we talk to think this will do the opposite for the economy. It's it's a this is a hit in more ways than one, and it it it, it affects more than just like us as showrunners. It affects more than just individual vendors. It's like the whole like kind of economy of vending around it kind of falls apart, and then the town kind of sucks too if that happens. And now here's first alert meteorologist Ray Petlin with a look at your weather for the week ahead. The snow is going to be south and east of Pittsburgh. We're going to see rain push up here, but it's going to have a hard time changing over, and that's not going to occur until likely after midnight. So we're looking at rain for a while uh, and then a change over to snow. But where we're going to see the best shot for accumulations is east of Pittsburgh, where we have winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings. We'll show you why with the accumulations expected there uh, coming up here in a second. But let's time this through. You see the rain overspreading the area by midnight 1 a.m. Some snow trying to show up back in southeast Ohio, but once that snow and starts to come together, it shifts quickly to the east. So that's going to largely leave uh, Allegheny County, Washington, Green, uh, Armstrong, a lot of Indiana and a lot of Westmoreland County out of the big accumulations. That's going to focus more off to the east, and that's been sort of a trend with these models. And during the afternoon, we'll see a, another little snow shower here or a little sprinkle there, but nothing too heavy for the afternoon. So when it comes to, to accumulations, we're not looking at big numbers in most spots for Pittsburgh an inch or less 
and most of us are going to have a real hard time even getting anything. Now, once you shift to the east and start to climb into elevation, the ridges, you could be looking at one to two inches, potentially three. And then once you get into spots like uh, Somerset County, Garrett County, Maryland, this is where three to five is not out of the question. But you can see how that snow is going to favor areas off to the east. And with our temperature setup, the snow is going to have a hard time sticking even what does fall in many of the lower elevations. So here's how things work out. Tonight, rain trying to mix with snow. Temperatures are going to fall to 33 degrees, but keep in mind the ground is very, very warm. We had a lot of sunshine, so snowflakes are going to have a hard time sticking. You need a good burst of snow to even get a slushy accumulation to pull off, but uh, that's going to be difficult to come by. And after some early rain snow, we'll see some flurries in the afternoon. Temperatures only topping off in the upper 30, so uh, a very similar day to average for this time of year. And over the next seven, once we get through tomorrow, we pick up on some sunshine Wednesday. Thursday, we get some early rain and snow. This transitions to a mostly cloudy day Friday. Another chance for some rain and snow Saturday. Uh, it looks like the temperatures are just on that borderline where the precipitation wants to go either way. And then I think the start of next week comes in a little brighter with temperatures in the low to mid 40s.